Hey everyone, welcome to part 5 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video we will look at how to use scriptable objects to store the data of Pokemons. So scriptable objects are data containers in Unity that lets you store large amounts of data efficiently. So this is ideally when you're making a game with lots of data like an RPG. So first we need to create a class called Pokemon Base. So inside scripts, I'll create a folder called Pokemons. And here I'll create the Pokemon base script. So this script will contain all the basic details of a Pokemon like name, type, base stats and all that. So let's open this in Visual Studio. Okay, so first we need to change the mono behavior to scriptable object. So next we create the variable to store the data of the Pokemon. So we need a name for the Pokemon. So inside scriptable objects, I like to use serialized fields instead of making my variables public. Let's use the serialized field attribute. So the reason behind this is because we need to use this variable outside this class. So in object-oriented programming, it's a bad practice to create public variables and use them directly outside the class. Instead, we need to expose these variables by using functions or properties. We'll look into more of that later. Next, I need a variable for description. I'll also make this a text area so that we have some space to type in the description. So next, we'll create variables for our front and back sprites. So we need both front and back sprite of Pokemon in the battle system. So next, we need a variable for the type of the Pokemon. So for that, I'm going to use enums. So first, let's create an enum called Pokemon type. And here we can specify all the types that we want in our game, like normal, fire, water, and all that. So let me just copy paste all the type to save time. And I'll actually make the first type as none. Okay, so now let's create a variable for Pokemon type. Pokemon can have two types. So since we use enums here, you'll get a really nice picker in the UI, which you'll see when we start creating our Pokemons. So, okay, so now we need variables for each of our base stats. So these are all the base stats that a Pokemon has. So we have max HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Okay, so now we have a scriptable object but we need a way to create instances of the scriptable object. So for that, we can just add an attribute called create asset menu on the top of our class. Here we have to pass a file name and a menu name. So we will have a new menu with this name, which we can use to add new Pokemons. So if we go back to Unity and right click on our project window in create, you can see that we have a new menu here called Pokemon. And inside that you have an option to create a new Pokemon. That's what we specified here. So I'll create a folder called game. And I'll store all the prefabs and scriptable objects in this folder. So in here, we will create another folder called resources. It's a good idea to put all your scriptable objects inside a folder called resources because later on, we might need to load all the scriptable objects we have during the runtime. So if you name your folder resources, 
Unity will let you load all the assets inside it during runtime. So in here, I'll create another folder called Pokemons. And this is where we will add all our Pokemons. So let's add one. Put Pokemon, create new Pokemon. And I'll call this Bulbasaur. So in the inspector, you can see all the variables that we created inside the scriptable object. Let's just fill this. So for the front and back sprite, I'll just bring in some new sprites. I'll create a folder called Pokemon. And I'll, I'll add some new sprites. So inside the front folder, you have all the front sprites. And inside the back folder, we have all the back sprites. Let's go back to the Pokemon we just added. Okay, so here I'll choose a sprite. So here you can see that since we used enums, we have a really good, really nice picker for selecting our type. So I'll select the types. And finally, you can find all these base stats on a site called Bulbapedia. So this is like a wiki for Pokemon. And, and has everything from sprites to all the formulas that are used in the game. So I'm going to fill this. So next I'll add one more Pokemon. So all the stats that you have here are base stats. The actual stats of a Pokemon that you or another trainer own will depend upon its level. So a level 10 Charmander that will have much better stats than a level 5 Charmander. So let's create another script called Pokemon. So in this script, we will calculate all the values that are specific to a level. So we don't need to derive from mono behavior. So our Pokemon class is going to be plain C sharp class. So in the Pokemon class, first we need a reference to the Pokemon base class. So we have access to all the basic details. So let's create a variable for that. I can't use base as a variable name since that's a keyword. So I'll just add an underscore at the beginning. Next, we need a variable for the level. So with these two, we can calculate all the other stats for the Pokemon. So since this is a plain C sharp class, we will have to assign this variable it's from the constructor. So the constructor will take these two parameters and assign to the to our variable. So now we need a way to access all the data inside the Pokemon base class. So earlier I told you that a good way of doing this is to expose these variables by using a function of, or a property instead of making it public and using it directly. So let's look at how we can do that. So you can either expose this by using a function like this, or you can use a cool feature in C Sharp called properties. So for the properties, we will use the same name of the variable, but we will make the first letter capital. So here you can see that N is capital. So inside the property, we need to define a getter. So a getter is like a function that will be called when some code is trying to get the values of the property. So in our getter, we just need to return the value of the name variable 
just like we did in the function above. So these are two different ways to expose a private variable outside the class. So the cool thing about properties is that it lets you use this just like you use a variable, but behind the scenes, it's working by calling a function. So if I want to use this inside the Pokemon class, all I have to do is call base.name. So this is just like using a variable. So I prefer using properties instead of function. So let's remove the function. So let's create a property for the description. So we need to specify which variable should be returned when trying to get the property. So we need to create a property for each of these variables. So I'll just copy paste this to save time. Okay, so now we have a property for each one of them. Now in the Pokemon class, we need to calculate the stats of the Pokemon at the current level. So again, we'll use properties here. So let's create a property for attack. And in the getter, we need to use the base attack and the level to calculate the actual attack stat. So this is the formula used to calculate a stat from the base stat and level. So we just multiply base stat with the level divided by 100 and use the float to in function to remove the decimal point and finally add 5 to it. Okay, so this is the formula that Pokemon Games uses. So I'll create properties to calculate all the other stats. I'll just copy paste them to save time. So we use the same formula to calculate all the other stats. The one thing to note here is that the max HP it's a little different. Instead of adding 5 at the end, we add 10. So you can read more about these formulas in Bodbapedia. So you might be wondering from where we will use this Pokemon class. So this will all make sense when we start developing our battle system. Okay, so I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, we will look at how to architect the moves of the Pokemon. So if you think these videos are helpful, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you in the next video.